Hello everyone. So in today's video, I want to talk about unsampling and sampling for Flux images. As in the previous video, we have walked through the Mochi edit sampling and also the unsampling method that they are editing for AI videos, AI animations, and then we are able to bring those segments to the latent image, allowing it to be transformed into other forms of presentation which differentiate from the original image frames. So, for example, I have an image that I generated previously of a woman sitting on a bench in the park, and then I transform that with different hair colors, and even the face looks different because there's some latent noise going on, and I got the dress to look different as well. It's a little bit pink compared to the red dress here. So what I do here is actually use a Flux Tapos custom node. This comfy UI custom node called the Flux Tapos is specialized for editing images using the Flux Diffusion model in comfy UI. Now, there are a few example workflows in this custom node, you are able to go to the subfolder and check the example workflows here. And basically, what it does is it has a few features highlighted on the GitHub page where you are using the unsampling from RF inversion. So what it means is unsampling the image in the first step. So for example, in this, by default, the workflow that the author provides has the unsampling groups where it clearly shows the Flux Forward ODE sampler which enables us to set the glamour to 0.5 and use 50% of the image noise, passing it to noise, converting those noises into different forms. And then, using the Invert Flux Models prepared custom nodes here, allows us to do the sampling in the sampler custom nodes. And through that, we see this very clearly, the Flux Guidance. This is from the Flux Tapos custom nodes. We set it to zero guidance and also disable the noise. So we don't need any noise injections in this sampler. We just need to break it down from the reference image and then pass that to the next step, which is resampling the image noise using the Flux Reverse ODE sampler. So reverse those noises back to what actually is an image with the text prompt that we have provided here, the text encoder nodes. And also we have the outward flux models custom nodes here. So Basically, you can think of this as the two from the unsampling groups, which is the invert and then the flux forward ODE sampler, and after it, breaking it down to the noises of the image. And it will come to the next step, which is the resampling step for flux. Reverse those ODE samplers of the latent image data, and we got the output of the flux model's data. Especially we need this part to identify what kind of diffusions we want to use for, and in the next step, it will be using our text prompts here to generate a very similar style to the reference image. So in this example, I have my reference image and after editing, I've altered the hair to purple and the dress to pink for the lady. And there's something added to the background as well. As you can see, there are a few people blurred behind the bench here. Whereas in the original image, there were no people sitting on the other bench in the park. But after those noise injections, there are some slight changes. But if you take an overview of the background, it mostly doesn't change too much in terms of the combination of the backgrounds. And then also the main character here stays still with the same pose for the character. So you can think of this like in Stable Diffusion's IP adapter where you can do the compositions and also the style transfer using your reference image to generate a new image with the IP adapter. And this almost goes to the same concept except instead of doing the opposite way. And we can also, for example, cartoonize our character from realistic styles to 3D cartoon styles. And also you can change the character to be completely different people, like from female to male. And you can use their default workflows for stylization, which bring the style transfer of the original images, elements, and objects to the new generated image to inherit those elements that are on the original reference image. Also, you have combinations of styles. So for example, you have two images, a phoenix and then an old cowboy man, and it transfers to a phoenix man as the output image here. So you can think of this as very similar to IP adapter compositions, but then it is not an IP adapter. But you have to play around with the settings here a little bit. The author has very clearly stated in the notes here that the unsampling step should be equal to the sampling step. So, what it means is that in your basic scheduler here, you have the sampling step. I set it to 40, and then you must use the same value in the basic scheduler 40 for the resampling. The next important step is to ensure the guidance is set to zero empty. For the basic invert noise we're doing here, we set the flux guidance to zero. 
After breaking down those noises from the image, we move to the resampling groups, where we return to normal flux guidance values of 3.5 or 4, sometimes higher, depending on how you want to stylize your generated image. We can also try another method with the RF inversions. According to the research paper about RF inversion, you can use a reference content. A reference image of a boy can be transformed into cartoon style with angry or smiling faces or even changed to a girl or an old man. It maintains the same compositions and pose as the reference image while allowing image editing to transform the new generated image into other styles, which is pretty cool. This custom node pack called Flux Topos includes a set of custom nodes with outwards inverse and other styles I've explored, including style transfer. I've loaded this style transfer workflow here. The unsampling hasn't changed much, but the outwards here is different. When we have the RF inverse workflow from the examples folder, we see the Flux reverse ODG sampler using contracts. However, Instead of using contrast for stylization or style transfer, we use the trend called linear decrease. Though linear increase is also possible, the settings for style transfer are different. You can also add your own LoRa styles here. For instance, if I have my trained character face, I can apply my trained character LoRa into the resampling image. For example, I have this North Pole ice and snow landscape capture image. I want to adopt this kind of material for style transfer. In the Comfy UI custom node examples, they use gold color material and styles for style transfer with a Viking boat, cat, and old man. We can try something similar using this snow and ice material for our new generated image. In the unsampling here, we've defined North Pole, ice, and snow. We'll use those materials to transfer into our new generated image. Let's say, for example, in the resampling image, we want to see a living room with ice and snow just a living room with ice and snow render styles. This kind of text prompt template is also available in the examples workflow, where they've already described this in the examples RF inversion stylization JSON file, so you can experiment with that as well. They use very similar simple text prompts to generate images. Let's try this one and see how it generates the image for us. This stylization's workflow is different from the RF invert I just did, which purely focused on the woman and image editing, the hair color and dress color. This uses different settings. Remember, we have several example workflows in the GitHub project page. The RF inversions workflow, RF inversions updated, other new versions or updated versions of the workflow, and the unsampling injected workflows. These focus on unsampling the image and injecting whatever elements you want to put into the generated image for image editing using Flux. That's basically the element of it. Wow, we have our new living room generated with elements of ice and snow using those white color and water styles from our reference image. We got the living room with that style transfer. It's amazing. I wish I could decorate my room like this without all the toys and stuff on the ground from the kid. That's pretty nice that we can do a style transfer like that. Let's try another style transfer. Another good style transfer example would be lava, where material style transfers are very obvious. Here we have the living room's coffee table or fireplace with elements of lava decomposition mixed in. Though it's not really like a typical living room anymore, we have river rocks flowing around as well. It looks amazing how we can mix elements and use our imagination in these images. Imagine creating AI video scenes using these kinds of decorations. In traditional filmmaking, we couldn't have such decorations or it would be incredibly difficult to create them in a real environment. So that's going to be the sampling and unsampling, how you can use and have fun with image editing using different compositions. We can generate new images like this, and especially with this kind of unsampling and sampling method, we can modify the character's hair. For example, in AI movies or videos, we can change the character's hair instantly. That's something amazing AI can do now compared to what we had before. Here are more examples I created. On the left is the original reference image, and I generated this cartoon, more 3D-styled character with cubic eyes and a smiling face, transformed using this reference image. I also used an image from our public Discord server member Mike, the Android 18 image from his generations. I transformed it into another 3D character style with modified face and skin texture, making it a 3D CGI character with a more smiling, happy face. The next example shows how we can transform this woman model into an alien standing on this coastal sea view. 
Let's run this once and see how it looks. We have the alien standing on the coastline with a similar layout. Mountains on the left background and the coastline on the right side of the image. The middle ground is different because I set the denoise to 1.0, which significantly changes the foreground. You can modify these settings. For example, I can set it to 0.8 to maintain almost the same pose as the reference model. It won't be exactly the same figure or body pose, but in these compositions, you can see it's transformed into a 2D cartoon style. Notice how both hands maintain the same pose, laying outward from the body. When we increase to 0.9, we get better image quality. Testing different settings will produce different output results. There's no single setting that works for all images. You'll need to adjust for each one. At this point, it's transforming into a 3D CGI style alien, maintaining the same position in the foreground with rocks and mountains in the right background. This is called the Comfy UI Flux Tapos. Give it a try. There are several example workflows here in my Comfy UI, referencing the example workflows. I plan to apply this to my previous AI video scenes creation workflow. As discussed earlier in these videos, I created characters and animations using workflows with different features and functions for various image generations, creating image scenes and converting them to AI videos. Creating the image is the first step in the image to video process, and it takes the most time to make good image scenes for your AI videos. I think the unsampling and sampling methods using Flux Tapos would be great to include in that multi-tools workflow. I'll try to integrate this into the workflow, create an updated version, and see how I can apply it in real AI video creation situations. After testing and experimenting with this unsampling and resampling workflow, I'll make another post about the updated AI videos multi-tools workflow. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.